Hi, my name is Winnie Dunn. I'm the professor and chair at the University of Kansas Department of Occupational Therapy Education. I'm also the author of the Sensory Profile 2. We get a lot of questions from people um, asking about proper use and um, adaptations and interpretations of the Sensory Profile 2. So we thought it'd be good to make some brief podcasts answering some of the most frequent questions. So the first question is about whether it's better to complete the Sensory Profile 2 with the teacher and parent. So if you click to the next slide, I'll tell you what I think. Question 1. Our therapist team really wants to continue to do the Sensory Profile 2 with the teachers and the parents themselves so they understand the questions and we get better answers. We see that the manual says we can send it to them for, um, for them to complete independently. We think we get better results when we have a dialogue. Can you guide us? This is a question I get a lot. Um, and I think it points to a really important distinction between uh, research and practice. What the manual is telling you is that we did not talk with any of the parents or the teachers while gathering the standardization data for the sensory profiles. So the cut scores that you use include all the people, those who understood a lot about the items, understood a very little about the items, people who are very strict in their interpretation of an item, and those who are casual. The important thing to remember is that even with all that variability in the people, we were still able to demonstrate differences among key groups and their sensory processing. Collecting all the families of children who have ADHD with all their inherent differences still yielded a significantly different sensory pattern when compared to children without ADHD, for example. So your team is thinking like people that are developing a relationship with families and are wanting to plan for their care, and that is why I suspect the interaction is important to you and to them, and it totally should be. Uh, that's exactly how you should think. But I, I would like to invite you to think um, bigger about the possibilities here. Um, if you did send papers ahead of time, I wonder um, if your team could brainstorm how you could spend that assessment time with a family or with a teacher. What questions would you have uh, for them and what questions would they have right from the start because they've um, read a lot of these questions and have some ideas about what you're going to be talking to them about. How would the conversation be different because they had to spend a few minutes thinking about all these ideas before you got there. You're not sort of catching them off guard or in the moment. You know, some people need some time to think through their answers. What could you get to discuss that wouldn't otherwise um, have time for if both you and the family knew that this was coming because you'd sent the material ahead of time? And how would the family come to understand or the teacher come to understand what's important to you and what your purpose is in being there? Sometimes we all get focused on the ways that we know without considering what's possible to know with another approach. I just want you to consider what the possibilities are if that same amount of time could be captured to do something else with the family or a teacher instead of completing an assessment that they could at least begin to complete by themselves ahead of time. Good luck with your thinking on this one.